Okay, welcome to this episode of the Smart Leader Cell Podcast. I'm Jessica Lorimer, sales coach and leadership expert, and today I'm joined with one of my Dossy members. I'm joined by the lovely Louise Mason. I'm really excited to have you here. I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> and you even sound excited. Like that's just great. <laughs> Sometimes people come on, they're like, "Yeah, I'm really excited about this," and I'm like, "Wow, okay." <laughs> you sure? No, I'm- super excited I've listened to I think every single one and every time I'm like, that's my favorite episode <laughs> <laughs> it's really good isn't it when it's like that I do that about um like Ali Brown's podcast and stuff so it's quite it's quite um strange to be on the other end and people be like oh that's really good and I'm like oh okay cool awesome <laughs> blushing in the corner <laughs> But I'm really excited to have you here because not only have you brought an awesome question to the mix, it's that you are what I would call my counterpart in the world. So Louise specializes in marketing. And it's really funny because before we started recording, we were talking about just how broad and how blue sky sales and marketing can be and how people often get the two mixed up and, you know, how it relates to selling and all of that kind of thing. And so you are the person behind people's marketing messaging and visibility is that right yeah so um what i say is i help um businesses so attract convert and keep their customers so i think this is where sales and marketing often comes hand in hand but often it's seen as separate as well so there's a lot of people that focus on just attracting and acquiring new business in and then they hand over that kind of conversion element to somebody else Mm-hmm. Um, and in some of the companies that I've worked for, you know, we did, we had telesales teams, we had account managers, we had a call center, um, and somebody else worked on that conversion point. And yeah. I think different, different businesses all need different things, but when it comes to, especially online, a lot of the conversions might happen on a website. Mm-hmm. I think there's an element of marketing that, it, that touches on that conversion. And then we quite often forget, so especially there's quite a lot of talk around sales funnels at the moment. It's really yeah. top time, isn't it? Um, I think <laughs> it does it forget. every year. Every year people go, <laughs> new year, new start. I don't really want to do too much this year. So I'm just going to set up a sales funnel. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> and I think people forget that they can put that customer back into the top of a funnel and get them to repeat purchase from them. So exactly. it's not kind of, I talk, often talk about the sales funnel and a customer kind of drops out of the bottom. And then we have to scoop them up and do something with them next to keep them. We don't just forget about them. We spend all that effort getting them in. And then it's like, oh, see you later. We've forgotten about you. And that's Um, the thing, isn't it? Because, you know, marketing is actually really, it's always an interesting one for me. And it's become even more interesting in the last three and a half years because I've spent that online. And the, the consensus generally online is that marketing just means going into a Facebook group and kind of posting there three to five times a day, right? And that must frustrate the hell out of you because it really (laughs) frustrates me. I'm like, oh God, if I hear that one more time and someone touts it as a as a visibility strategy or or a key method of marketing, I'm just going to, you know, have to stick a fork in their ear or something because it just isn't. I'm finding a lot of people are talking about Facebook marketing. There's always you know, how to get more engagement in your group, how to this, how to that on Facebook. That sometimes makes me feel like I want to talk about anything except <laughs> Facebook right now because it's part of a wider mix. And so yeah. I sometimes say, you know, Facebook isn't the holy grail of marketing. Um, social media isn't that it's part of a wider strategy and you have to, so you have to take people somewhere to, to buy. You can't just like hang out on Facebook. Exactly. And this is the key thing, because the other thing, the other myth that I always hear about marketing is people go, marketing is really fluffy and it kind of doesn't do anything. And sales is where the money is. And I always massively disagree with that because obviously I come from a sales marketing background. I'm like, if you don't have visibility, you will never have traffic. If you don't have traffic, you will never sell. You know, so when Louise is saying there about it's really, really important to have a wider moving strategy that actually converts people that's how you can tell a good marketer from someone who goes i can get you a hundred thousand followers on insert platform name here because that's completely irrelevant it doesn't you know those are vanity metrics in comparison to actually talking about what matters which is your bottom line and revenue generation and customer retention yep so all those things right there so i'm a massive spreadsheet geek yes (laughs) so all of that data and insight and learning from what, what's happening and why something's working 
um, that really floats my boat. So I've been running a challenge in my Facebook group and we've been looking at those kind of key stats. Um, and it's amazing how many people, they don't think of that as marketing. So that definitely, it's, it's fluffy, it's creative, it's coloring in. And then I kind of rock up and go, it's data, it's numbers, it's strategy. Like it, <laughs> it, it's a blend of almost like creative and science. So yeah, I once did one of those personality tests that tells you if you're left brain or right brain. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty much 50-50. Yeah, um, I'm saying so it's that kind of science and creative balance, I think, that makes me perfect personality wise to, to be in marketing because it's that blend. And that is it. Ultimately, you've got to have both or good marketers. Let, let's put that out there. Good marketers yeah. have to have both because ultimately, and, and this is the same in anything, right? It's not just in marketing, it's also in sales, it's also in health and fitness. You can give all the ideas, but if you can't track, how the ideas work, you will not be successful. Because ultimately, success is about taking an idea, making it work, and then testing and tweaking it accordingly to make it the most efficient that it can possibly be. So if you're not okay with data, if you're not okay with looking at how to make things better, then actually you're never going to be as successful as you thought you might be or as actually it's possible for you to be because you're not willing to do half the work required. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a big, big topic. So shall I ask my question? Go for it. It's a really, it's a juicy one. I'm like, I, it's, it's a juicy one. Yeah. So my question is, so when does marketing become sales? <laughs> so it depends who you ask is, is the first caveat to this. Because if you ask any salesperson, they will tell you that the sale starts as soon as the salesperson gets involved, which they try and make <laughs> as early as possible. <laughs> Just so they can claim the credit, right? <laughs> We've all been there. So for me, the the big difference between marketing and selling is that marketing is about generating the traffic that I need to walk into my office or virtual office and say, these are the options I have to solve your problem. Sign on the dotted line, right? Everything up until that point is marketing. So how we find the traffic is marketing. How we get the traffic to come on a journey with us is marketing. At the point where they have a one-to-one relationship with you, it becomes selling. Because at that point, you are preparing them to buy. Do you see what I mean? So if we look at that in, let's, let's go with Facebook because it's the popular platform at the moment, marketing for me, would be a Facebook ad, coming into my Facebook group, watching Facebook lives. The minute it turns into sales is when we start having a one-on-one question. Now that might be on the Facebook live. I might say, oh, hey Louise, it's your first live in here. It's great to have you here. And you might start a conversation from there and you might ask a question and I might answer. And at that point, it becomes sales because that is where that one-to-one connection is made. Whereas marketing is about getting, for me, is about going and saying, okay, here's the mass traffic. How do I bring the right people? How do I attract the right people and get them into that one-on-one relationship? Now, the thing is that after you have that, so after the sale is made, some people aren't going to come through. They're not going to be sold to. They will drop out of the funnel. You know, they might come to a couple of Facebook lives and then they might stop turning up that's where it goes back into marketing. So it'd be someone like Louise's job to re-engage that person, either through email marketing or through retargeting with a Facebook ad or something to pick that person up out of the, the murky depths of Facebook and say, hey, remember Jess, she's still here. Get back into that conversation loop with her. Do you see what I mean? So that's the difference for me. It's not that they are entirely separate things. I think actually they're very, very close together. But for me, marketing is about mass traffic and getting, funneling them into the one-on-one conversation. The minute the one-to-one relationship starts happening, that then becomes sales because that person is being prepared to be made an offer to that is going to solve their problem. I love that idea of that when it becomes one-to-one, it starts to become a sales conversation. Yeah. So I was just thinking about, so particularly I work with a lot of small business owners, so quite often it's one person in Mm -hmm. the business so they might be doing their own marketing 
they're also doing their own sales but yeah. they might not realize that they're doing their own sales yeah and actually it's especially that example that you gave so you know we're in we're in my facebook group and we've just started having this conversation it's become one-on-one -on -one, but i'm still thinking of it being marketing because i'm nurturing you i'm warming you up you're still kind of a prospect um but actually it's then having the the strength then to kind of go okay this is now a sales conversation because at some point i need to sell to this person and give them my offer and have the ask as um, gary v would say exactly but, but that is the thing and i think a lot of people a lot of people discount sales activities and marketing activities when we can't put a clear line on it it becomes really easy to think oh yeah well and and having worked in, in corporate companies everyone wants to take a slice of the pie and rightfully so yeah. that's how you get paid it's how you get commission all that kind of thing but it then becomes very murky around well who did what what impact did the marketing team have on someone winning a multi-million dollar contract you know, what impact did the salesperson actually have? Because if the marketing was that great, you know, the salesperson may have come in really late to that one-on-one -on -one conversation, in which case, actually, the business was probably won by the great marketing or vice versa. Do you see what I mean? So that's why I try and make the distinction as as soon as that one-on-one -on -one conversation is happening or that experience is going on, that's when it becomes sales. And that's when you have to put the different head on and go, actually, like we said, I need to now take this through. This is a sales conversation and I need to take that through that process versus trying to redirect that person back to different free things or back to things that are designed to pre-qualify the mass traffic that's coming through the funnel. Yeah, and we were talking earlier, weren't we, about um, pre-qualifying. And I think there's an element of that that I think about with marketing. So pre-qualifying that traffic so that we get the best possible people and audience in front of us that we want to convert so getting them right and then there's actually there's a further element once you then get into that sales process there's a, like another round of pre-qualifying to do to make sure that they're right for the thing that you're next going to try and sell them and it's it's huge like pre-qualification really is key i i always say a great marketer will bring you the best leads from the seven point however many billion people in the world a good marketer will bring you the best leads possible that are attracted to your message that, you know, are aware of your brand that know what you're, you're all about, what problems you're potentially could be solving for them. A good salesperson will take those good leads and convert only the best ones of the lot. The ones that are going to cause you least problems, the ones that actually are committed to making any changes, the ones that are going to pay on time, that's what a good salesperson does. And if we look at it from the position of, you know, again, if we go back to the Facebook example, it's kind of where people get confused because most people will say, if I use Facebook ads, I should make more money. Well, no, the job of the Facebook ad is not to make you money. The job of the Facebook ad is to bring the exact right people into your audience. And it is your job or your salesperson's job to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation and actually sell, right? The ad does not make you the money. It brings you the best leads, your job to step up and sell to them. And that's, that's the difference I see between the marketing and sales piece. Yeah, that's a fantastic example. So, so I do get a lot of people coming to me and they, you know, they want me to help them with their Facebook marketing yeah. but because they just want to get more sales on Facebook. Yeah. And, you know, there is so much that I can do with my marketing hat on to get them in. But then if they want to, so if it was a restaurant and they want to book a table, I need the person who answers the phone to take that book in, to be able to take that book in. If they go to a website to purchase a product, you have to be able to buy the product. So, um, you know, I did have somebody and the, there was a problem with the, the payment buttons weren't showing up properly. And it was, you know, oh, why aren't we getting any more sales? It's like, well, it's not because I'm not sending you the right people. They want to buy. And it was a problem with some of the tech stuff on the website. So, yeah. This is the important thing. You know, running a business is, it's like a, it, it's almost like running a car. If something isn't working in the way you expect, you don't automatically assume, oh, well, it's this part of the car. You actually look, you reverse engineer the problem. If there's a big noise coming from the engine, you go and look at that. You don't just go, oh, well, it must be something in the boot. Do you know what I mean? 
And this is why it's so important when you're running the business to look at every part of the process. Is the marketing person doing their job? And if they are, great. If they're bringing in a ton of leads, but your salesperson is getting really low conversions, it doesn't automatically mean that your marketing person's crap. It could mean your salesperson doesn't have a great conversion rate and that they need training. Equally, it could mean that your marketing person hasn't got the right leads coming in. So it's, it's people who are too advanced or too far behind what you're actually trying to sell. So they need to be qualified a bit more. You know, it's never going to be a hard and fast rule. And I think that's what people need to understand about marketing and selling is that the two do sit really closely together. And in order to have an effective process, you've got to be able to sit across the board and go, right, what is the customer journey? And how do we decide when that customer journey gets to be one-on-one? You know, at what point are they qualified enough for me to want to talk to them one-to-one? Yeah. Because I was thinking about those, yeah, that they say it's seven to 10 touch points to in that buying decision making process. And there's lots of different touch points that those marketing activities can have. Mm. Um, And at what point then does it become something different? Um, And whether that is just that, you know, you put your sales hat on and you say, right, I'm now going to have a sales conversation with this person we're going to approach it in a different way exactly and I think you know as well you've got to look at um from a customer perspective so one of the things that I always do is as soon as somebody gets into my Facebook group it becomes a sales conversation at that point the relationship generally is a sales one because they found my group through my other marketing methods you know the the mass traffic have pre-qualified themselves either through listening to the podcast and saying, okay, Jess is an all right human being. I'm going to go and find out more about her. You know, they have may have downloaded an opt-in and made it through my fairly lengthy email welcome sequence, <laughs> you know, and, and have gone through that and pre-qualified themselves as, yeah, actually I like Jess and I, I like what she stands for. Those things are designed to pre-qualify people and help them decide, do they like me or not? Do they trust me or not? Do they think that I'm giving them valuable information or not? At the point that they decide to go into my Facebook group, that's the point that they've offered to share their real time with me. At that point, they're indicating, I want to have a real time conversation with Jess. Whether it's virtually or face to face, they're in there. If they're asking questions, if they show up to a live, all of that stuff is one on one. So at that point, they have filtered themselves through enough of my marketing material to make me realize that that's the sales environment. Does that make sense? Yeah, but that's really interesting though, because obviously I came, so I came to you um, into the, when it was the FFE, so Mm -hmm. into the um, the Smarties group now, and it did not feel like I was in a group being sold to. You know, I I felt welcomed, you know, you were thrilled to have me there. We got into some conversations. I never really felt like you were selling to me. It was just like, this is who I am. This is what I stand for. So there's a little part of me that kind of still sees that as that kind of like nurturing yeah. element to it and still kind of part of that marketing, but it's kind of closing the gap on the funnel. And it actually took me, I don't know if it was two or three rounds of the dotties being open before I joined. I, you know, I really took my time to decide exactly. that it was right for me or waiting for the right time for it to be right for me. But it does go back to the things that you do say in the group about selling. So mm-hmm. I don't sell very often in my group. So yeah, thinking of the baby bird analogy that you do, (laughs) and you know, I do, I feed people with marketing advice in my group. Um, and then I don't necessarily then ask for the sale because I'm thinking, oh, because this is marketing and it's nurturing. And that's really interesting that although you approach it with that nurturing feel in your mind, this is part of the sales process. And, And this is the thing because selling shouldn't feel... Um, it shouldn't feel any different to marketing, in my opinion. And that's why in my group, it's, it, it is nurturing because ultimately the marketing has worked really hard to get me the best people. So those are the people I want to spend my time with. And regardless of whether they buy from me within a day or six days or six months or six years, it doesn't make any difference. The point is they're there and they're indicating that they're committed. And so if I constantly turn them away, which is what happens when we over nurture. So when we do, you know, that, that baby bird syndrome thing of just feeding them more information, what we're actually doing is constantly putting up a barrier to that one-on-one relationship. And we're saying, no, 
I don't want your money. No, I don't want your money because we're always referring them back to marketing. And it's like, we're asking them to pre-qualify themselves hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of times by going back through the marketing process, you know, I'll go back to the Facebook ad, go back to this free resource, go back to this welcome sequence, go back to this. When in reality, they've already indicated, hey, I've proven myself. I'm already here. I really want to have the conversation with you. Just tell me how I can do it. Just made me think hilariously. Um, <laughs> Obviously, I'm, you know, I'm a marketeer and that's exactly what I'm doing. Then I'm, I'm keeping people in that marketing funnel because that's, that's where my strengths are. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. But we don't, we don't think about it like that. We assume that everybody always wants free. And in reality, they've, it, it's kind of like, um, you know, it's kind of like Hercules, right? He goes on the quest, he fights all the monsters. And then it's kind of like he gets to the end and, you know, Zeus is like, nah, I'm just going to do that again. I'm just going to do it again. Just fight another 12 people or whatever it is. And that's what we do when we don't offer the sale. We never close the loop. We never make people feel included or wanted because we're constantly turning them away. And like you said, you know, it took a couple of rounds of the dotties to open up for you to make the decision. And that's normal because do you know what? If I, when I offered it the first time, you could have been really new and thought, actually, I don't know Jess well enough yet, but it's, it's on my radar. And the second time, hmm, I could be really busy with clients right now. Might not be the right time for me to do it, but hmm, it's on the radar. And then the third time it comes up, it's like, oh, actually, I've known Jess for ages. Of course, I trust her. And it's a great time for me and my business to look at investing in something like that. Why, why would I not join? Do you see what I mean? So it's not about putting someone back into the marketing loop. It's about putting the, the services on the radar and making it a really easy choice for them each time to go, do you want to say yes or do you want to say no? Mm, yeah. And I love that, that you said, you know, about it being, it doesn't feel any different. It feels the same. It's yeah. a sales conversation, but it feels the same as a marketing conversation. So, cause I think sometimes you do get hung up on that kind of, you know, sleazy used car salesman yeah. um, approach to selling um, that when it doesn't feel like that. So it was exactly that. It was kind of like, Oh yeah, this, this is, it's the right time. Jess is great. I love all the stuff that she puts out. This makes sense. It's a no brainer to join. And, and it didn't feel like you were saying, you know, Dottie's is open. You must come and join. You're in my group. So you, you know, you should join. You were just like, you know, it's here. If you want it, it's here. Come and check it out. Ask me some questions, um, which just felt much nicer. Yeah. So that's given me some things to think about. The thing is, why waste your time marketing to people and giving them like my, my old boss used to say this. He's like, just give them some love right? And that was his thing. He's like, just give him some love. And it didn't matter whether someone had been an absolute ass to you. He was like, just always go back and give him some love. And so marketing does that. It makes people feel really warm and fuzzy, right? Email welcome sequences are designed to make people feel ingratiated into your brand, into your world. They get to know you. They feel really good. You know, Facebook ads and, and those kinds of funnels, webinars and all of that kind of thing is all designed to do the same thing. It's designed to make people feel good. So at the point where you get to the sales conversation or you start building that sales relationship, why would you make it feel bad? You've just spent like all of that time <laughs> trying to make them feel really good. So then suddenly they come into your world and you're like, now I'm going to make you feel shitty now. Like, what is it? Just for giggles. It's, it, and, and that's how it can be. People differentiate selling sometimes like that. And they go, selling's really cold, selling's really hard, all of these kinds of things. But actually it's not. You can do it in exactly the same way. It's just about making the choice and it's about not wasting the way that you want people to feel consistently throughout the customer journey with you. I love that consistency in the journey. Yes. Yeah. And that goes right through to delivery. You know, we were saying this earlier, if somebody, if somebody has great marketing and a great sales process, honestly, they'll probably be able to sell anything. But if their delivery is crap, if their customer service is poor, they'll lose that person forever. You know, so it's, it is about consistency, but it's about consistency right from the very beginning. And that's why it's so important to market authentically. You know, ultimately, if you are a fairly sarcastic, cynical person, I will put my hand up. Um, it's very difficult to pretend to be fluffy, unicorn, whatever, for 
six months while somebody makes a choice to work with you or not. You know, it's a completely, completely new situation. I think that's what we have to remember. It's not about sales and marketing being different. It's about using them cohesively to maximize the, the energy and the effort and the return that you're going to get throughout the whole customer journey. Does that make sense? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love that. The, yeah. yeah. So yeah, marketing and sales hugging each other is um, yeah. <laughs> just see like a little like a little gif of like um, yeah, one's marketing and one's sales and they're hugging each other. <laughs> we'll have to make it. We'll, we'll just make it. It'll be fun. <laughs> Zuckerberg will love us. <laughs> oh dear. So where can people find you? Because this is the thing, you know, ultimately there are lots of people in my audience who are probably sat thinking right now, oh God, okay, yeah, maybe I don't make that many sales because I don't have that much traffic. And actually what I need to be focusing on is getting more qualified traffic coming through the doors rather than trying to go to people who are already in all of my programs. So where can they find you and what can you do for them? So uh, my website is yourmarketingspecialist.co.uk and I have a Facebook group, which is Your Marketing Lounge. So we, we, we talk in there and um, so I do share marketing advice and tips and we have Monday blog club so people can get comments on their blog to try and again, grow that visibility um, there. So um, what I've done is um, put a page together. So if you go to yourmarketingspecialist.co.uk forward slash smarties, like Aww. the chocolate, um, and you can find out, so then you can find me all my social media stuff because I've got everything. Um, and there'll be a couple of um, PDF downloads in there. So I've been running a 10 day challenge with my group. We've been calling it a marketing detox and looking at some, some stats and some core foundations. So some of the non fluffy stuff and a bit more of the geeky stuff, um, <laughs> looking at like budgets and, and what's working and what's not working, trying to eliminate the stuff that's not working. So the toxins and so I'm going to put some of the, the PDFs from that up there, um, specifically for people listening to this podcast, because you can't get it any other way unless you're in my group in part of the challenge. So I'll put a few, a few things up there for people to, to access, and then they can find out where to find me. Awesome. That's amazing. And I think you're the first person who's ever done like a, a, a podcast special link. I love that. I'm like, wow. <laughs> <by that. laughs> you know what? That's because I listen to Pat Flynn with the Smart Passive Income podcast, and loads of people do it on that. So, um, your, your podcast, um, after I listened to the first few episodes, I was like, yes, this one, and I had to get rid of some others that I was kind of messing around with listening to every now and again, but oh, Pat Flynn I listen to, you I listen to, but there's a bit of competition because the Screw the 9 to 5 podcast is coming back, but it's back. I know, yeah, it's back. I really mean back. I know. Um, so, yeah, you guys are my, my top three podcasts for the, for the commute in the car. <laughs> Well, there you go. This makes me feel good. I'm like, Scott, when you edit this, definitely do not edit that out. We are on a par with Pat Flynn and Screw the Nine to Five, <laughs> both of which I, I really love. I obviously met Pat um, at the Upreneur Summit where I gave oh, him I was so of- jealous that I could have made that. <laughs> honestly it was so he he just looked so sad he was like trying to leave and I'm like hey Pat and he's just like oh god I was like give my friend a hug like and also me (laughs) my friend who I've just met who I'm sharing a wine with like not a problem (laughs) and it was just kind of like ah yeah 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 okay awkward she's a she's a British person and and you know seemingly crazy I'll I'll just give it a go (laughs) but um yeah no that is wonderful so make sure if you have got problems with traffic traffic flow finding the right qualified leads coming into your business you do go and check out louise obviously look at the show notes we'll have all of her links and her special smarties podcast link up there which i think is brilliant so we'll have that there too you can go through you can get access to all the resources that she mentioned there and thank you so much for coming on today honestly it's been so much fun spending time with you and i feel like i've learned a lot in the process as well awesome I've absolutely loved being here and uh, I can't wait to see you in person in real life at the Ritz in February that was going to be awesome I know February the 10th hopefully your podcast episode will come out just before it and then everyone will be like oh my god where is Louise at the event it'll be amazing (laughs) (laughs) so there we go guys thank you ever so much for listening to today's episode if you have enjoyed it please make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any other episodes and if you have enjoyed listening to me and Louise discuss marketing and selling and what the real difference is please make sure you leave a review and like us know how we're getting on and I will see you in Monday's episode